Welcome to this morning's edition of Dragons of Takir by Nerd and Geek University. We have a few new dragons to discuss as well as other spells that were released during PAX East. The first card is a mythic Elder Dragon, Dragon Lord at Takara, legendary creature card, 8-8 with flying and trample, with a mana cost of 1 red, 1 green, and 5 colorless mana. This card's triggered ability is when Dragon Lord at Takara enters the battlefield, it deals 5 damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and slash or planeswalkers your opponent controls. Sorry, Narset, no emblem for your controller this time. Constructed play, Dragon Lord Atakara will be difficult to play even with a Dragon Servant Atakara Command and Shaman of Forgotten Ways, not as likely to be pulled in limited, but then that allows for a possible turn four play of Dragon Lord Atakara. Though playing this card is an endgame strategy, it will be difficult to build a deck around him in Limited. He can be eliminated by Radiant Purge, so playing him, you will have to be aware of the colors your opponent has already played for mana. Dragonlord Ataraka will have troubles finding a deck type to find home in current deck constructions at the competitive level of play both in Standard and Modern, even with... A well-designed ramp, the best one, can only get him out by turn 3, and then you have to wait to see the next turn if you get to keep him and attack with him, assuming that your opponent doesn't have Tragic Slip, Hero's Downfall, Mana Leak, and so on. EDH, this card could find a place in a multicolored dragon-centric deck, allowing the card's active ability to help with removal upon entering the battlefield. I wouldn't be surprised if he has a deck main around him as the commander, but he would be better as a creature card due to his higher play cost. Cunning Breeze Dancer is the first uncommon dragon spoiled from the Dragons of Takir set. Cunning Breeze Dancer is a flying dragon 4-4 creature with a mana cost of 1 white, 1 blue, and 4 colorless mana. This card's activated ability is when you cast a non-creature spell, Cunning Breeze Dancer gets to plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. An expensive dragon to initially cast at 6 mana, but after your next turn, you can plus up Cunning Breeze Dancer with plus 2, plus 2 by casting non-creature spells, and since this card's colors are white and blue, there are plenty of instants and sorceries to cast. Constructed play, this card may be utilized as an endgame creature spell due to the higher mana cost and would be an option if you didn't draw any of the other rare or mythic dragons in your chosen color pool. Anticipate, as well as Abzan Advantage or Pressure Point, are all low mana cost non-creature spells that either give card advantage or removal that are more likely to be pulled when drafting since they are all common cards. In both Standard and Modern, this card doesn't seem to have enough playability to be utilized in a manner that would allow for the player of Cunning Breeze Dancer to be competitive against other decks other than budget variants. EDH, this card could be used as a budget option for a dragon-centric deck or a deck that is spell-heavy, like White and Blue Control maybe, that needs a bigger creature for a last swing for the win. Epic Confrontation is a common sorcery card with a mana cost of 1 green and 1 colorless mana. When you play the spell, target creature you control gets plus 1, plus 2 until end of turn. It fights target creature you don't control. Each deals damage equal to its power to each other. In constructed play, Epic Confrontation would pair well with Foe Razor Regent by allowing Epic Confrontation to plus up another creature in order to trigger Foe Razor Regent ability or Foe Razor Regent itself. This card could also help eliminate a potential blocker before allowing that same creature, Fulrazer Regent, to attack. In standard and modern play, this card may not see much utility since there are many other removal mechanisms that are available to construct a viable deck. In EDH, and also Tiny Leaders, Epic Confrontation could aid in the deck's ability to remove another creature from play. Stormwing Dragon is a 3-3 uncommon flying first strike dragon creature with a mana cost of 1 red and 5 colorless mana. This creature is a megamorph with a 3 face down mana cost and a megamorph cost of 2 red and 5 colorless mana. The megamorph cost at 3 colorless mana allows you to conceal that this dragon card is such and so at a later point in the match you can play the megamorph cost of this card. 
In addition, whenever Stormwing Dragon is turned face up, put plus one, plus one on each other dragon creature you control. Wow. Though the mana cost is high, the triggered ability of turning this card face up makes it a great addition to all the dragons you may have already out on the battlefield. This card does have a high mana cost, and the Megamorph cost makes it even more expensive to play, but with the additional trigger, this card can be like a trap against other players not expecting him when he's turned faced up. Stormwing Dragon would work well with Dragon Tempest as well as Salt Road Ambushers, giving Stormwind Dragon a plus one plus one counter on him as well as when Stormwind Dragon is turned face up, giving plus one plus one to all the dragons you may already have out. Also, using Descent of Dragons before turning Stormwind Dragon face up is just a much more board control and power you can have upon the battlefield against your opponent. Again, like the previous card, Stormwing Dragon most likely will not see much play due to its high mana cost as well as its lack of synergy in decks outside of dragon-centric design. Budget EDH dragon-centric decks could utilize an additional feature with the creature type as Dragon and utilizing his Mega Morph abilities as part of your strategy and could give you a late turn advantage to win with a Dragon EDH deck. Collecting Company, a rare instant card with a mana cost of one green and three colorless mana allows the player to look at the top six cards of their deck and put up to two creature cards with a converted mana cost three or less from among them onto the battlefield while putting the rest of the cards at the bottom of their own library in any order. In limited play, this card could easily be ramped into with Shaman of Forgotten Ways and place onto the battlefield Anok, Guide, and Alicia who smiles at death to name a few creatures that you could place directly onto the battlefield if they are on the top six cards of your deck. This card could possibly be played in a mana ramp deck with Noble Hierarchs and Birds of Paradise played in modern decks allowing the player to find those cards in their library and play them the next turn. Again, this would not be competitive unless the deck was creature heavy and your deck can have a slow start and mid play late game win condition since your creatures need to be at least three or less converted mana cost. Maybe this card could be introduced into a Tron strategy to find mana producers like Noble Hierarch or even two Shamans of the Forgotten Ways. Talk about playing an extra four mana and the formidable trigger condition of Shaman of Forgotten Ways. I could just shudder to think what that could mean in the right play combination. This card has more limited use in EDH due to the card's mechanic not allowing for a creature card to be greater than three mana maximum. Savage Vent Maul is an uncommon flying 4-4 dragon creature with a mana cost of 1 red, 1 green, and 4 colorless mana. The activated ability of this card is whenever Savage Vent Maul attacks, the player receives 3 red and 3 green mana to their mana pool. Until end of turn, this mana doesn't empty from your mana pool as steps and phases end. This card's triggered ability is a late game mana producer that will you will want to use to attack each turn to be able to have extra mana for more late game card play. In standard, this card has a high mana cost but could see play in a red-green devotion deck due to its ability to supply that deck with more mana. More interesting is his ability to be played in modern as a ramping mechanism for red-green Tron to help cast, you know, maybe Emrakul of Eon's Torn or Karn Liberated as that deck's winning condition just by declaring this flyer as an attacker and then use all that mana for the winning cards that you want to have played. It will be interesting to see if this dragon from Takir makes it into Tron or not. In EDH, Savage Vent Maul may become a staple since most EDH players like to attack and gain mana. This card gives them both. A possible good fit in a NMR Soul of Elements deck or maybe having two of these cards would be more desired if you have your commander be Raku of Two Reflections. The options with a commander that shares the color of Savage Vent Maul makes this card a consideration in your EDH designs. This is the first half of the afternoon spoilers of March 6th. There was so much released from Pack East to include future blocks that we are trying to catch up and check to make sure that it wasn't a dream. Don't worry, we will still be reviewing Sark and Unbroken and the other cards spoiled from yesterday. Check out our other videos and other channels as well as like, comment, share, and subscribe to Nerd and Geek University. Follow us on Twitter to keep up to date on your favorite NGU topics. Simply put, play on.